Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Blessings to you all in the precious name of our living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My brother, brother Joe, mother and myself, we are happy to bring the word of God into your midst according to his eternal plan. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank thee, Lord, for calling us by name. Thank you, Lord, for granting us this blessed opportunity. Every turn, you are there to guide us. Father, without you, we cannot go alone. Father, with you, our lives are full and complete. We are blessed and we are bold, we are strong. Lord, your presence makes our life meaningful. Your presence makes our life complete. Lord, and thank you for being with us and granting us a grace to be as your dear ones. Forgive all our sins, my God. Accept us as your dear, as your own. In Jesus' mighty, precious name we do pray. Amen. Shall we prayerfully confess all our known and unknown sins in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ and ask him for forgiveness? Anything that which stands between the Lord and us. Let it be removed. Ask the Lord for his mercy. As we continue this uh, beautiful topic in this part two episode, let us say these words in the Lord's presence. Lord, I'm not going to grieve your Holy Spirit. I'm not going to hurt your heart. Thank you for being with me. In Jesus' name, amen. The book of Acts chapter 5, from verse 1 onwards. A certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold the possession and kept back part of the prize, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. A very important family in the early church. A very important family Certain man named Ananias with Sapphira. As we find that there was a strong decision they both wanted to make in God's presence. That is beautiful. They wanted to sell a possession they had. And now the plan was in verse 2. All of a sudden, a change. They wanted to keep part of the price of the position they sold and his wife joining hands along with the husband's decision. They both agreed to that. When one makes a promise to the Lord, a walk to God, it also adds and God takes it very seriously. Because it's something, a commitment which comes from the heart. And if, there, and if anything goes wrong, it is time that a person asks him for forgiveness and asks the Lord to once again to be at peace with the person whom he has forgiven. Anana and Sapphira knew about the power of God which God was doing through his servant, St. Peter. The future belongs to the Lord. When they made a great decision, it is just not for boasting of a namesake, a word just spoken in front of everyone and going home and doing what they like and deciding 
forgetting that God speaks to Peter. God speaks to Peter. They decided, let us keep a part of the price. And what they have sold out of it, a part of it was brought. And Anania laid it at the apostle St. Peter's feet. Why was it so? If you can turn the Holy Bible to the same very book of Acts, chapter 2, we'll read 43 and 44 to us. 43 and 44. The book of Acts, chapter 2, 43 and 44. Fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together. See, in the early church, they had all things common. This was something great. They wanted to be always a support, a part of the vision of the early church. And also let us read 45. They sold the positions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. This was a wonderful, wonderful missionary act. We find in chapter 4, verse 35, they laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. 37th was, having slammed, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So this is how it used to happen in the early church. So the same way Anani and Safira also wanted to do. But they couldn't make the word complete. The very fear about the future held them. If they could share it to God, God knows it. But they have aligned to God and to his Holy Spirit. They brought it and laid it at the apostle St. Peter's feet. Immediately, Peter questions Ananias. Why had Satan filled your heart, Anania? Why has faith Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep part of the prize of the land? It is very scary when a question was raised as such. It is true, many times, many lives allow Satan to play a role. Life of hypocrisy, life of life full of drama. Doesn't God know what is happening in a heart? Does not God perceive the things? He knows everything. Do not ever act holiness. Brothers and sisters, live truly. Every person upon the face of the earth, if the more stronger they come closer, the more stronger they walk. To become closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. The challenges should ever let them know. That as they come closer. Asking for the Lord to forgive. Every sin is being forgiven. And the Lord accepts his people as his own. And who is he. Who would say that I'm not going to forgive. And God himself has forgiven. Every person is going to be judged. On the final day, even the adversary will be questioned. There is a time for everything. The Lord wants every soul he has created, his children, all of us, to be worthy of his eternal kingdom. How painful it have been to Peter when God revealed the truth about how Ananias had lied. How oh, Ananias has lied. See how Peter questions. Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? And to keep part of the prize of the land? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. But unto God. 
is very, very, very powerful statement. A question raised to Ananias. What could he answer? He could have very well told the truth. Beloved ones, do not ever, do not ever cheat God. Never ever allow his anger to kindle. You can read verse 5. Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. Great fear came upon all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much? And she said, Yes, for so much. Oh my, what a painful lies these are. There are some people who very easily lie. Very easily they speak against the Holy Spirit. Very easily they work wicked, wickedness behind. Yet walking in God at the same time, Laying nets. Be careful. Be careful. That you are healthy in the Lord. Be careful that your soul will never be lost. She also answers the same way like a husband when Peter questioned her. She also said yes. Have you ever experienced someone who very much lies? And you know the fact but yet never to agree and so peacefully and easily. Things against God is being uttered. Let us read 9. Peter told unto her, How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold the feet of them which have buried your husband are at the door and shall carry you out. Then fell she down. Straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. The young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. Great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. I want you to read Malachi chapter 1 verse 14. Cursed be the deceiver. Cursed be the deceiver which hath in his flock a male, uh, and woweth, and sacrificeth unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, said the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. What a powerful verse this is. Keeping a healthy one and making a walk to God, but sacrificing a corrupt one, not right in sight of God, God is saying, I'm a great king. He's a ruler of the whole universe. And let us come to him to make him to be pleased about us. Not to allow any of the worldly diversions hurt his heart. Make a decision to be so perfect that we are washed by his precious blood. The precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and found it worthy to stand before the Father God. Keeping him always pleased about us and happy. Not allowing his Holy Spirit to be grieved. So let us make a vow of prayer in God's presence. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit O oh my soul, O oh my heart, make the Lord happy and pleased at all times. Amen. This is a great commitment and a confession that we make. In the name of Jesus Christ, allowing His Holy Spirit to always be pleasing about us. Heavenly Father, we come to your presence as we are. Help your children. 
to live a closer walk with you. Not to allow anything to work against them. To allow your power. To allow your compassion. To allow your mercy. To always stand right, my God. Lord of all ages, and your mercy endure it forever. In Jesus' mighty, precious name, we come to your presence as we are, humbling ourselves, asking you for forgiveness, accepting us as your own, through the precious blood of your Son, our living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we are cleansed and made whole to be as dear ones for you forever. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. God bless you, dear brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. Be careful that you always honor the name of Jesus and make him happy. Do not grieve his Holy Spirit. God bless you and praise the Lord. Once again, Brother Joe and myself, we are upholding you in our prayers and we'll be bringing you the word of God, God willing, once again tomorrow, Indian time, evening from 8 p.m. onwards.